Good evening, everybody. We are back with part three of five of the five books in five weeks. So I know most of you are probably wondering if it's part three of five, how is it possible that we will ever get through the five books? We haven't even started. We haven't cracked Genesis yet. So you'll see it's going to go faster than you can imagine. So I'm going to have a handout for you hopefully next week. We're getting our, our printer set up. We're going to make, be able to make copies for everyone and get this off the, the, the center back up and running. Um, and for those of you online who are not from Houston, you probably have heard someplace in the news that there was a, a big Harvey. I'm not talking about Harvey Weinstein. We're talking about Hurricane Harvey that hit Houston. And, um, and this entire place was... Uh, was uh, was flooded, and most of our city was flooded, and uh, sadly many, many homes were flooded. So, uh, we don't have, I don't have copies for everyone, but I would want everyone to know that you will have copies of the full five books summary, that, like I have here in my hand. I will have it for everyone, hopefully, God willing, next week, um, we'll be able to have copies for everyone. Okay, what is the book of Genesis? The book of Genesis, the first of the five books of the Torah, and it focuses on the family of Israel. All right? It's the fundamentals of Judaism. And we're going to go through it now in two different segments. The first segment is going to be the first 2,023 years, which is two portions. And then the next remaining 10 portions of Genesis are a total of 600, 200, sorry, 286 years. Okay? And that is going to be talking about four generations. A total of four generations. Adam, uh, sorry, Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and the tribes. Four generations. That is the book of Genesis. Okay, so we're going to divide it into the first two parts. Beratius, the first portion. We have the six days of creation. What happened on the first day? Anybody know? On the sixth light. day? Heaven and earth. Okay. Midnight. Light. Separation between light and dark. Day two, God fixed the skies. Day three, we have the grass and the trees. Day four, the sun, the moon, the stars, the galaxies. Day five, we have the fish, the birds. And day six, we have the animals, Adam and Eve. Day seven, rest, Shabbos. No work. Right? And there's a discussion whether or not Shabbos itself is a creation unto its own. It's its own creation called rest. Or is Shabbos the lack of creation? Right? Okay. I can, I'll leave that to you to do the research and to come back with a conclusion next week. But... On the day seven, it was a day of rest. The Torah tells us that six days you shall work, and on the seventh day you shall rest. Just like God did. God worked six days, and He rested on the seventh. Now, we have the Garden of Eden, right? We're familiar with the tree of knowledge. God tells, him, <clears throat> tells Adam, don't eat from the tree. Now, it's important for one minute to focus on this. Why... Is this an important piece of information? It sets the tone for humanity, actually. It sets the tone, okay. It sets the tone. Well, yeah, we know because <sighs> we were punished because of it. We were punished forever because of that one sin. But it could have been any tree. It could have been a shrub. Right, it could have. It right. could have been anything. Right, so, so now, there's another, another important fact. What type of tree was it? So people think that it was a book. Of, it was. It was. It was a, an apple tree or some. Okay. What it, what our sages tell us it was was the equivalent of what, of what bread is. Bread? The equivalent of bread. You just pick it off a tree. Bread tree. Now, well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but now you got to go do it yourself, right? You got to go do it yourself. You got to go work hard. Keep yourself busy. Keep yourself out of trouble because you obviously don't know how to follow instructions. God says don't touch it. Right? Don't eat it, sorry. And he, of course, goes about it and eats it. Now, what happens 
that they get to the point of being able to eat it. What happens? What transpires? How can someone, God warned you and says, don't eat from this tree. Now there, so we know that we, we, so right, so we know free will. The serpent beguiled her and he showed her that if you do this Nothing's going to happen. Nothing's going to happen. Well, he said then when what will eat. happen is you will be like unto the gods and you will begin to have knowledge. Right. And of course you will die because you'll become mortal eventually. Right. So, okay. So we'll, we'll you see. You can't have babies if you don't. Okay. Uh, okay. So here let's, let's see something very interesting. Okay. I wanna, I'm focusing specifically on this point. There's a lot to discuss here. But let's, let's think for a second. Okay. What did Eve tell the serpent? For God has told us not to. Eat, oh, touch. No. Touch. 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 Yes. touch. She added on a commandment that was never commanded of her. God didn't say you can't touch it. God said you can't eat from it. Right, you can set up a swing and swing from that tree. There are a lot of things you can do, right? But, but God only said, do not eat from the tree. And she added to it. And this is one of the warnings that our sages tell us. Be very, very careful to add to the Torah. Don't add to God. God knows exactly what we're, what's important for us to stay away from. Don't add extra rules to God's rules. Okay? Obviously, there is a, 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 a range of, and like we mentioned earlier, of addition that we're allowed to add. But you, even when you add, you have to remember that it's just an addition of your own. Meaning, if, if Eve would have said, if Eve would have said, God said not to eat the tree, eat from the tree. So fine, we don't eat from the tree. But she said, don't touch the tree. So what did the snake do? The snake pushed her. She touched the tree. He says, you see, nothing happened. So now the whole barrier, everything fell. Right? That's not what God said. Don't add to God's rules. Don't add. Okay, so that's a very important principle. We have to remember this. Don't add... Okay, now there's another point here. Right? I heard this from a great rabbi. He says that the entire purpose of all of creation is appreciation. Appreciation. Adam was kicked out of the Garden of Eden because he didn't appreciate what he had. What he has. What he had. Go out and start earning a living... Go out and start make your own, making your own bread. right? Go out and start having to have pregnancies that are not simple like Eve's. And now you'll start appreciating. You'll start being thankful. The harder you work, the more you'll start, the more you'll realize how good you had it. All, if you want to know what, the, what all of prayer is, prayer is giving thanks. It's giving appreciation for what you have. That's really the foundation, the fundamental of all of Torah. Appreciating. Now, like we mentioned Thursday night last week in our journey through Jewish fundamentals, like we mentioned last week in the introduction, part one of the five books, is that the, the Judaism is not a religion. Judaism is a relationship. And the Torah takes us through this relationship. The purpose of the purpose of the tree the, of of our blessings of every of of Adam being sent out of the Garden of Eden is to learn to appreciate. That's our job to get to a point of perfect appreciation. We see also the fundamental principle of free will. You can choose to do whatever you'd like. You can eat what you want. You can act how you want. It's your choice. You have free will. God gives you guidelines. He tells you, I recommend this. It's very important for this relationship. Now, if you don't want the relationship, you can do it what you want. Right? What you choose, but it's your choice. 
You have free will. Right? The reward for doing the right thing, when you had a choice, like all of you who were here last night had a choice to watch the football game or to come here. Tonight there's not really anything to watch. Is there? Is there? Am I missing something? Right? Is this? <laughs> okay. But... You know, but there are other things. You want to read the book. You, you know, you have to catch up on, on this work, on that, fix, you know, cleaning out the pantry, whatever it is, the projects that you have to do. And yet, you, made, you, you took your free will and decided to come to learn Torah. Right? So using that free will in a positive way will hopefully be very rewarding for every human being when they choose the right thing Right? That's our free will that we always have. We also see the concept of reward and punishment. We mentioned this in the introduction. We have this concept of reward and punishment. Every single deed that we do has the potential of getting us reward and has the potential of giving us punishment. It's up to us whether or not we are going to do the right thing and get that reward or do the wrong thing, God forbid, and get a punishment. So the question that's always asked is, well, you see so many righteous people and they have such a difficult life and you see so many evil people and they have such a glamorous life. So that's like the Mishnah says. The Mishnah says, I believe it's Mishnah Tet, the ninth Mishnah or the eighth Mishnah in Ethics of Our Fathers. It says over there, Al tit yaesh puranut. Don't worry about God's accounting. He's got it in order. Okay? What might look to be, you know, a, a, a glamorous lifestyle, right? Don't don't judge a book by its cover. There's so much, you know, that God is control God is controlling everything. But there's so much that you don't see. You think that they're getting away with murder. They're not. They're not. Leave it in the hands of God. Don't worry about it. Just do the right thing, and you'll be rewarded duly. Okay? Yes? You mentioned the creation took six days. Mm -hmm. And on the seventh, it was a day of rest. Does that imply that possibly that there was a fatigue factor, and after six days of doing these unthinkable, unimaginable things, uh, he was tired. Um, no, I'll tell you why. Okay, you know, th there's this 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 uh, ridiculous uh, question that's asked. You know, are you saying that God can do everything? Yes. So, Rabbi, can God create a stone that He can't pick up? Right. No. So the, the the answer is obviously no, because God can't be limited. Creating a stone that He can't pick up limits God, so you can't limit God, right? It's the same equivalent as, has God ever had the flu, right? No, God hasn't had the flu, right? You understand, you, you, we're trying to relate to God in a human way. Right. God isn't human. God doesn't work by time. God, you see, there's a lot of things that, that we're putting into this, into this question, into this, that is basing God on human standards. God doesn't work on human standards. In fact, we'll see that, I believe it's here at the end, we have the ten utterances. God, God didn't create the world by taking a... Um, I, I'm going to add it here. The ten utterances. Okay? I don't have it here on the list, but I'll make sure that hopefully by next week when I give you your handout... You'll have it, right? The ten utterances. My, my theory. Yes, your theory. Uh, day six, mm -hmm. he did animals and man. Right. Uh, it seems to me that the first five days were perfection. Uh, the sixth day with animals, that was pretty perfect. Uh, it seems to me he blew it with man. Really? There's a lot of opportunity for improvement. and uh, So maybe God's perfection in man is that he created us imperfect. Is, is there, we, we're yeah. perfectly imperfect. Because here's, here's the idea. What was the last thing God created? 
Man, man. Thank you, man. right? Man. Well, that was on the sixth day. That was great. That was at the end of the sixth day, the right? Of mankind, yeah. of course, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, so let's 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 ask an honest question here. Okay, honest question. When you build a car, right? Do you build the the steering wheel first, or do you build the engine, and then the frame? And then, the, you know, the last thing is you build the chair, the, the seat, right? You put that in, you put the steering wheel in, and then you have the key, right? It's the very last thing that they'll do, right? Make sense? Okay. Wait, why don't you just make the key first? Are we going to put it in? Well, there's, no, there's no, right? Now, that's, it's not a great example, but, but um, you, you build the whole, the whole uh, world for what it was created for. Okay. It was created for man. The world was created for man. For man to find his perfection. God created us with every human being, with our limitations, so that we arrive at our perfection. Now, uh, there's a couple of very important points I need to, I need to mention here. Okay? I don't know if to share this on, 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 on Facebook or not, but... I should go for it, okay. But please, I'm not. Uh... Okay, no, I'm gonna, I'm gonna share it because it's Torah. But I'm, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll share it. Uh... Is there a way to pause this here? Okay. No, but it's, it's like okay. So I, I was teaching this class many years ago, and uh, we we're talking about Adam and Eve, and I just keep on going, right? And everyone's like, whoa, 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 hold it, what's with that woman? And I'm like, what are you talking about? They're like, you know, that woman. And everyone's saying the name. You're not supposed to say you're not supposed to say the name. Don't say it. Don't say it. It's a demon. Don't say it. Okay. So I'm like, it doesn't show up in my Torah. I can show you my Torah. It makes no mention of that woman. And therefore, I don't I don't know what you're talking about. Okay. So right after class, Rabbi Kohn, our in-house Kabbalist, uh, was you know, in the other room. I walked over to him, I said, do you ever hear this nonsense about this other lady that Adam was married to? And he's like, he says, he's open in the middle of the Arizal, all right, which is one of the great Kabbalistic sages. He's like, right here, oh my. on this page, read this. And I'm like, what? How come nobody ever told me this? Okay, so let me tell you, let me tell you the rest of the story, okay? What happened was that God did create man and woman. I have proof from the verses, by the way. If you learn the verses, then after that, I went back to back into the into the Torah, and I started reading the words very carefully. And suddenly, ah, there's a hint to this. It's right there in the verse, but you have to be very, very understanding of right. The, all the secrets are there. Everything is there. Nothing is hidden from the Torah. All right. Just very, very briefly, I'm going to do this in, in 30 seconds or less, no questions, okay? God created man and woman, all right? That woman, we're not going to say her name. The purpose is for man to reach his perfection. The purpose of a woman is to assist man in that perfection. She was not willing to do that, right? She's like, we were created equal, and that's it. You want to know where the woman's lip movement started from? That's where it is. That's, where it is. that's, it. that's the genesis, of it. So one, sec one, one second. On one second. One second. One second. One second. So she was not willing, and I can show you this in in, in 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 the books as well. I should have a copy handy in case you stone me. But either way, um, I I then so then she was expelled. They both. Were. She was no. She was expelled first. Okay. She was expelled from the Garden of Eden, and then God took a rib. From Adam, so now she is from him. Hold on, one second. First the first woman was expelled. Yeah, she's okay, bad. she's out. Bad. And then, when she saw how the proper relationship between a man and a woman was supposed to be, that's when she became into a demon, and all of her role in existence is to take man down. That's her job. You say that you're in control. I'm going to show you. I'm in control. This is he, I mean, This is not. Yeah, this first, is that first woman. First, first, okay. Yes. Now, why did God create that woman? Uh, okay. Yeah. How much time do you have? Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's good for a man to perfect man. 
Right, it's not good. Exactly, it's not good for me. Right, because without it says the, the Talmud says many different things that are uh, going to happen to man who's or what is with man who's without a woman. Right, you're without a wall. You're without all these different uh, um, uh, metaphors to you're you're lost. You're right. A, a man needs to be in a mar- in a marriage in a relationship with a woman so that he can reach his perfection. So that he can get. And it says the woman is an ezer connecto, a helper opposite him. Right, opposite him meaning a challenge to help you perfect yourself. Right. I, I'll just give you a very simple example. I remember this um, clearly when I was in uh, when I was when I was in in yeshiva and we were working on different traits uh, in yeshiva. So one of the questions we had was we asked and my grandfather, of blessed memory, we asked him, "So how do we work on the trait of arrogance?" Right. So my grandfather said, "Trait of arrogance, you have nothing to worry about. When you get married, your wife will take care of it." <laughs> right. right now there are other traits you have to work on. You have to work on before you get married. Arrogance, she'll take care of you. Okay, so, uh, so, <laughs> yes. Was um, so is my understanding flawed when I read it and I see that animals were intended to be the first friends of Adam, and then uh, when why? Because it says that he got to know them. Yes. Right, so now the reason why he got to know them, what does that really mean? It doesn't mean that they became pets, right? He didn't have a pet alligator, right? But he named them. See, he had to find their essence. So when you know the essence, then you can give it a name. A name defines the character of a person, right? So that's what you're not allowed to, according to the Talmud. It's a very, very terrible thing to give someone a nickname. Mm. Uh, hey, Shorty, right? It's a very, It's a very bad thing because... You're changing sort of their essence, and that's not that's not right. They're created for a specific purpose, a godly purpose, and by giving them a new name, you're sh- sort of taking that that away from them. Okay, now, um, okay, so that was point number one. So Adam, that first woman, right? Eve. Now, if you look in the Torah, the Torah says, right, after God creates Eve from Adam, what does God say? What does Adam say? I saw no. <laughs> I saw her. Sorry. I, I, where are my ribs? Right? <laughs> no. So. so <laughs> no, right. So, uh, what, 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 uh, what Adam says is Zosapam, this time, this time, right after Eve is created from Adam, it says, this time. Etzematzamai, a, a bone from my bone, right? And flesh from my flesh, right? Now it's already a different existence. Okay? And then the, the Torah goes on to give more definitions to this. Is it on this topic? It is on this okay, topic. Okay, great. So, with then why must Eve take the blame? Because they're, For they're Adam? one. Mm-hmm. So she's always getting the rap. And how to know the sweet without the bitter. How would she become immortal after she's been commanded to populate the earth had she not done this thing? And convincing Adam okay, so, after she did it would be simple. Great question. Great question. But you're going to have to come to breakneck through the Bible for that, okay? <laughs> because, because there's no way in the world we have enough time Especially, we are limited to five books in five weeks. It's great questions, and they deserve fantastic answers, hopefully. Uh, ho- hopefully, the answers will be as good as the question, right? Hopefully, but we, can't, we don't have enough time for that, so we're going to have to get to it. Now, we have to see that animals, we weren't made to serve the animals, all right? Whatever was created last, it was created for men. That's why God could have created man in the beginning and then do the whole development of, of, of the world, Right? God didn't create again. God created the world through utterances. So God wasn't ang- well, God wasn't wasn't tired, right? By the time he's done, oh, boy, you know how much work it is to make the sun to light up the sun. Can you have any blow torches? I needed for this, right? No, that, that's not. It was an utterance, right? God said, and it was, right? That's right. Well, it's the starter fluid. Well, that's exactly. 
All right, so we have this idea of reward and punishment. We have Cain and Abel. We know what happened there. Cain was cursed and protected. We have ten generations pass. And then we have the wickedness and sin in the land. God says, that's it. I'm putting an end to this. And then we have Noah. Did you start back up? Yeah, we started okay. earlier. Yeah. Why? I thought you paused it. No, 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 I didn't. I, oh, I, I, okay. I, no, we don't have pause. It's all, you know, life doesn't stop. Even if Facebook stops, life doesn't stop. So we have this pr fundamental principle of common sense. And we mentioned this, right? If you weren't here earlier, the question is, how can you punish someone who was not warned? Noah and his generation weren't warned. They didn't have a Torah yet. They didn't have rules and regulations yet. How is it possible that you're punishing them? The answer is common sense. The Torah doesn't tell you common sense. The no commandment in the Torah is common sense. It's all things you would not understand on your own. You Except need for the heifer thing. The heifer is, you don't even know the reason for it. <clears throat> others, you can understand the reason. Not all the others, but yeah, the majority of others... Uh, you know, even those that are a chok, those that are a in a, a, uh, a, a, a law without reason, even those that are law without reason, King Solomon, the wisest of all men, knew the reason for those. And I trust Right? Him. Okay? But not the red heifer. Red heifer was hidden from him. It was not hidden, hidden from Moses, by the way. Okay. Now, next portion. Noah, you see that? We did one portion in... 20, 12 minutes it was? Okay, so we, we got to move it. So Noah was righteous. We know that he was, he was he, right. He contributed morality to the world. Now what's the challenge? The challenge with Noah is that Noah, it says that Noah, tzaddik tamim ayyabedoratav. He was a righteous person in his generation. Why in his generation? Why are you limiting it? Oh, in his generation, you know, you know, Lahavdo, right? You can't compare between holy and unholy. Babe Ruth was a good player for his time, right? Right? It's like you're taking away the quality of how good he was, right? For back then, people didn't know how to hit home runs like they do today, right? So it's like, it's like you know, it's like, so over then he was pretty good. Right? That's not the way it works, right? Right? You're righteous. Noah was righteous, but in his time, in his time he was righteous. What do you mean? So I say to say, yeah, he himself was righteous, but he didn't undertake the responsibility of his generation. He didn't do outreach. He didn't reach out to his generation and get them, right? Yeah, he built the, the, the ark. It took 120 years. People asked him, and people laughed. He didn't say, you know, come, let me explain to you. He didn't do what Abraham did. And Abraham was sort of like a correction for Noah. And we'll see that in one portion. He built an ark. And I believe that the ark is also representative of this world. This world, we have God created heaven and earth. Heaven and earth. Spiritual, physical. Materialism, right? And holiness. That these are, these are they're, they're, they're not parallels in, in, a, in, a, in a holy way. They're two different realms. The ark, the building of the ark, what God is telling Noah here, is that there are two different worlds. There's the world inside the ark and the world outside of the ark. Every home that we have, every Jewish home, should be a place where inside is that safe spiritual space. Outside, the world is full of decadence. The world is full of immorality. The world is, is full of, you know, uh, temptation. Inside, right, we don't have that flood, right? We have to stay, make sure we keep ourselves holy from within, okay? It's just an interesting metaphor for holiness and spirituality that we learn from Noah. He gathered one set of all non-kosher animals and gathered seven sets of all the kosher animals. It was the great flood. It rained 40 days and 40 nights. And we've discussed uh, sometime in the past... So I'll repeat it quickly. Um, what's the number 40? We know that numbers mean a lot in Judaism. Right? The number 7, 